started rather casually last week looking at what I titled How to Live in Nigeria. How to Live in Nigeria. Maybe if we're to be in America, we will be looking at how to live in America. How to live in London. But this is Nigeria. It has pleased God to have created you in Nigeria. In this land, you will live well. Yeah. I said in this land, you will live well. Yeah. But let me quickly say this. It is not everybody in America that is better than you. Even as you are in Nigeria. You get the point? There are many Nigerians that traveled out of this country and they are hanging there. They can't come home. But not as if where they are is better for them. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So it is not also everyone in Nigeria that is poor. Dangote, if nobody else, is a Nigerian. And the richest man in Africa. So what can happen to one man can happen to all. It's a function of what God has chosen to do with the life. In this country, no matter the records of evil, I speak by the spirit of the living God. It shall be well with you. Yeah. I said, it shall be well with you. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. I said, in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Living in Nigeria. Psalm 37, verse 25. Psalm 37. Verse 25. Psalm 37. Verse 25. Let us read together. I want to go. I've been young. And now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken. But he say. I want you to read it again. And personalize it if you can. I want to go. I've been young. And now I'm old. Yet. Now read it like this. I shall not be seen to be forsaken. My children will never beg for bread. I shall not be forsaken. My children will not beg for bread. My seed will never beg for bread. In the name of Jesus, I speak that to your life. So shall it be established. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Psalm 37 was said to be written by King David. And he wrote it in his old age. So what he did in Psalm 37 was something I could call the summary of life. He recounted his experiences what he had seen. He said, I was young. He started taking the records when he was young. He started taking notice of these very facts when he was young. He said, now I'm old. He continued. So it was a research or an experiment that he started at an earlier stage of his life. And consistently, he kept up, with, kept up with it till he became old. So it was a testimony. It was not recounting the experiences of others. He was saying what he witnessed, what he knew. Now, I know the story of my life. I know what I've seen. I know the places I've been. 
And so, it is practically impossible for someone to argue against it. I was discussing with someone one day, I think it was on the social media, and I've had to say that to one or two people also off social media, that if you look at a book like the Quran, for example, it contains some writings about Jesus. And this was what was said to have come via a revelation to their prophet. And I keep asking, when the man went to the cave according to what was said, and he received the revelation, who was his witness? Who was there seeing the book being brought down? And these books eventually contain some of the things that were already in the scriptures for more than 400 years before the prophet even came. Now, particularly the New Testament, what were those things that were in circulation? Stories about Jesus. Stories about the birth or even the conception about his birth. Stories about the miracles, signs, and wonders that he performed that were pensued down, particularly in the gospel, starting from Matthew, Mark, or which one, Luke and John. And these were records of eyewitnesses. His disciples, people that went in and out with him, people that saw him performing those miracles, people that saw him hanging on the cross, so there is never a book that we come to give contrary revelation more than the ones that the eyewitnesses had pencilled down that has been in circulation before the revelation comes. So listen to me. King David was not talking about a revelation here. It was not like he dreamt when he was sleeping and when he woke up, he now began to write no. Only saying that these were the things I saw with my eyes opened. These were the things that were clean, clear to me. These were life events, real events, practical events, not a revelation. Not what I had, but what I see. So it is only a fool that we doubt what he could say. So he said that I was young and now I'm old. What I've been able to establish remain the same. Just listen to me. So this was a shepherd boy now introducing the writer or the speaker. A shepherd boy that became a giant killer. This was a man that started fighting battles very early in life and fought till he died. He never stopped fighting. Even at an old age, he was still fighting. This was a man who started life in the house like normal people. But at the time, he found himself in the bush, living among animals, only to end up his life in the palace. In other words, when you talk about life experiences, the good, the bad, and the ugly, David had it. He had it. When you are talking about the love of God in relationship to God, there is nobody that had better record than David. When we are also talking about atrocities in offenses against God, was there anybody in the scripture that did worse than him? So this was a complete man. When you are looking for good things, you can mention his name. When you are also equally looking for bad experiences, this man was there. When such a man says something, please believe. Take it serious. This was a man that fought and won battles, starting from his own blood brothers. His own blood brothers. To the king, he had earlier helped to regain sanity. And the battle never ended there. He even had to fight 
against his own child. Sometimes if external forces are acting against you, you run to your brother. Sometimes if you have one, two, three brothers, if one is fighting against you, you run to the others. How do you now relate, madam, when all your brothers have the same opinion about you and all of them are working against you? As a matter of fact, how do you describe the life of a man whose parents did not even recognize? They were saying they wanted to anoint someone as a king. They brought all others to kill with the possibility of being anointed as a king, but they forgot this only man in the bush. How do you describe somebody whose parents have forgotten? Whose parents never could have imagined would become the breadwinner and the most popular of that family. Somebody shout hallelujah. That was David. So I've written here, if external persons are fighting you, you may run over. You may run home, but where do you run to when your own brother is standing against you? You can run. You can only run to maybe your parents. So where do you run to when those parents are not the one that have chosen that you have forgotten? You are a new entity. Where do you run to? So at a time in the life of this man who is talking here, we can say he had nowhere absolutely to do what to run to. Somebody shout hallelujah. If the children of others outside are waging war against you, was that not why the Bible said we should have children? So that they can help you stand against your enemy. Where do you run to? What do you do? How do you act when your own child now <laughs> rose against you and he was to do everything to do what? Divide your kingdom because he felt that your time was up and it's time. Let's go. And all that your son sees to divide your kingdom, wanting to make himself the head of Saul. There are battles that are very easy to win. That is battles outside. Battles against outside forces. But how do you fight when your own son is rising against you? This man had it. He experienced it. His son rose against him to divide his kingdom. How do you relate when you have nowhere to run to? So this was a man that had the hands of God upon him early in life. Is anybody listening to me? Anointed as king. Yet, he has to fight and fight and escape death and fight and fight before he eventually entered the palace. So if you are talking about a man that understood how life works in the Bible, Man called King David. Go and take time to read his writings. Go and take the time to read his history. So he knew so much about life. He knew so much about poverty. He knew so much about loneliness. He knew so much about disappointments. He knew so much about battles. He can tell you the strategies of winning battles. He can tell you about, about hunger. This was a man that got so hungry to the extent that he got to the synagogue. The bread that <laughs> took it and ate it. I cannot come and die. So the man knew so much about battle, about hunger rather. He knew so much about prosperity. You know what? He tasted all. He tasted all. He knew about 
not just fighting, bare-handed with animals. They also knew how to fight humans. He was a giant killer. So here he was writing as an old man. And so I want to show you three imagined facts from his writing in this chapter 37. I mean, uh, verse 25. Of course, we'll still read some other verses in the course of this discussion. Number one, in recounting his life experiences when he was young, and now that he has become old, according to him, there were certain facts he witnessed. In the same vein, there were certain things he didn't see happen to certain kind of people. Is anybody listening to me? In other words, these things that he saw that never happened to a certain kind of people is irrespective of their location, irrespective of their certificate, irrespective of their backgrounds. So that suggests that occurrences in life are more or less the same, regardless of times, regardless of seasons, regardless of ages, regardless of location. Terminologies or descriptions may differ, but life happens every time and everywhere. Is anybody listening to me? Life happens everywhere, every time. Life happens everywhere and every time. That is the first. You must let me tell you this. Running out of the country does not solve any problem. If you have problems in Nigeria, if you do not stand to resolve the problem, if you go to Canada, you will see a problem. And that's why you see some people, they travel out one year, five years, ten years, they are there. As they are making the money, they are also spending it. They can come to Nigeria and pretend to be big man. Why? Get just a thousand dollars. Not a thousand pounds. A thousand dollars. Come to Nigeria. How much do you get as of today? Six hundred and something thousand naira. So get two thousand dollars. You are already a millionaire. You can even borrow to buy a vehicle. Send it home. So by the time you come here, you put all the chains on your neck and your everywhere. And then begin to wear short knicker and t-shirt. And then you carry Afro, you are an Americoco. The money with which you have come to Nigeria to do all those shakara you borrowed. By the time you return back, you pay the debts. When you get to the kind of houses they manage in London and the weather, when it becomes harsh, you will only thank God for your life here. Number two, one of the things that King David witnessed was that, hmm, is anybody listening to me? There are times in life that people are forsaken, abandoned, forgotten, uncared for, unremembered. And this is also a part of life. He said he has not seen the righteous forsaken. Which means he saw some people that were what? Forsaken. Some people that were forgotten. Some people that were neglected. Why? Relative to their needs. It's a part of life. It's, this is a part of life. I have not seen the righteous Forsaken. He has seen some people being forgotten, being neglected, being left alone to suffer and die. But in all of this, 
King David said he discovered that inasmuch as being forsaken, being abandoned, being neglected, being left alone, to suffer alone as if you know nobody, it's a possibility, it's a reality in life. He is saying here that there is a way you can position yourself there is an alignment that will always ensure that you are not forsaken. He said he was able to see, though in the land where others have been forsaken, I have come to see certain kind of people that were never forsaken. In the land where I could see beggars all over the places, I could see a kind of people whose children never begged for bread. May you enter into that realm. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So, he said, there is a kind of relationship you can form or enter into that will ensure that you will never be forsaken or abandoned or left alone to carry the loss of burden of your life. Let me tell you this. If you have no help, if you are to carry the load and the burden of your life alone, and if you do not know this that King David know, that fellow cannot live long. The fellow cannot live long. The fellow cannot live long. The fellow cannot live long. But he said, I've seen a kind of relationship and so this is a secret. You adopt it, you live living, you live, you live well in Nigeria. Irrespective of what is happening. The ploy is that King David is revealing to us. I was young, now I'm old. It has never changed. It is a confirmed principle, established fact. Proven facts, nothing changes it. Your own belief does not change it. If you believe in it, the better for you. Number three, he said, another major experience of life that King David witnessed was a situation where people do get caught or get hooked in extreme, extreme lack. He categorized this as their children begging bread. Extreme lack. Total lack. To the extent, you know what that suggests? There is nothing for the family to do. Business crumbled. No job for the father, no job for the mother. So the only thing they could do was to send their children out to bed. May that not be your portion. Amen. If you are in this category in this church, the power of the Holy Ghost is pulling you out. Amen. If you believe it, please shout a louder amen. amen. That's a category. So, now, if you are a family man, today is Father's Day. For those who are responsible father, there is no irresponsible father in this house. All the fathers in this house, we are responsible. Amen. Amen. If you are a mother too, you will agree with me that you will rather go hungry instead of your children. I saw this played out in my mother and in my grandmother many, many times. I told you how my, we have just once in a while that I go to stay with my late grandmother, we just have little quantity of here. And you will see my mother at the same time trying to warm Amala or Eba. So you will be imagining what she wanted to do while she was having the yam on fire. By the time we begin to pan, boom, boom, boom. Because as far as she was concerned, we must also eat the yam. So by the time she started it, you will see her mixing the pandemia with Amala. 
Say if you want to eat amala, shouldn't you just eat amala? And if you wanted to eat pandeja, you just eat pandeja. But she wanted to give us a feeling that we're eating pandeja. In other words, I grew to tell you that there are categories of pandeja. That the pandeja made of pure 100% yam. There are also pandeja made of 50% yam and 50%. Whether you call it adulterated, that is your definition. I only call it categories of what? Funded. Yeah. She be at the end of the day. Did you see us funding? Yes. Did you know what we miss with it? No. When we are taking the okele, why will you see us taking? Somebody shout hallelujah. So when the children begin to beg for bread, this is a description of extreme level of poverty. So King David witnessed that there is a way you can position yourself such that you will not operate in that, in such extreme level of poverty so that your children will not begin to beg for bread. That will not be your portion. Now, you see, all these things we are talking about, King David lived between 1,035 and 970 years before Christ came at all. And yet, this was the result of the research that he carried out. If that is the case, I may be able to tell you that events of life are merely cyclical in nature. Events only come and go. To do what? To reoccur again. Events only look at it fashion, for example. When I recall, all those kind of suit of my father that I used to wear back then. Have you seen somebody that will wear only pants? No shirt. No, and then you are wearing suit. And you are putting on tie. Maybe I will just go to the box where they kept my father's things. And I will see suit there. And I will see tie there. I will not be tied. Do I know how to not tie? But do you know one thing? Those ties actually look like the one we use now. They are tiny. In the process, some styles of suit came. But do you know what? Even if, my, if I still have those suits now, do you know that I can put them on and you will never know that I didn't just buy it? When I was still passing through, there was a day I was putting on one jacket. I bought it as used. Very old. Somebody shout hallelujah. And I was going to appear on Chinese television. So that my wife's immediate younger brother was around. So he came to our house and he saw me appear that way. He said, wow, Uncle Yomi, this is a suit. It's one in town. Later suit. Whereas, if only he had come near me a little. There is no way you dry clean a loose suit or you perfume it. It will take a while for that to leave. If only, even me that was wearing it, I knew. And by the time I appeared on channels, they still held me. Events of life are cyclical. They happen. They go. They only reoccur. The stock market will collapse, will recover, only for it to do what? Collapse again. Economy will become bad, and then will become better, only for it to become what? Now, Obasanjo came to Nigeria as the president. He met a lot of debt with Okonjo Iweala. They went all over the world, negotiated the debts, they repaid. 
Now, what has happened to the debt again? It's a cyclical thing. The debt that this country is owing now far exceed what Obasanjo met. And he paid back. Another government is coming. They will repay. Another government is also still coming. I will still plunge you into debt. But listen, no matter what they come to do, in this Nigeria, your children will not pay. So what are the facts about the Nigeria of today? Number one, there is poverty and hunger in the land. That is the reality. That thing that King David saw between 1,035 years and 970 years before Christ came, we are seeing it in Nigeria now. Live and direct reality. This is not a revelation. This is what we are passing through today in Nigeria. But that hunger in the land is not your portion. That is the essence of this discussion. In Nigeria today, we can see adults begging for bread. We can see children begging for bread. I've not seen someone in two, since 2009. This is somebody that I, if you ask me, do I even see, do I really know her well? No. I came to Accra in 2009 to establish a firm, and I don't know who brought her to the office. She only came working in a bank and then requested that I open an account. The relationship did not exist more than that. And I eventually did not even open the account. But you know how account, I mean, marketers in the bank work. They will come, pester your life, do everything. But again, she will, when I put things up to now, when I put things on my status on WhatsApp, she will comment. And sometimes when I go on her status, I, 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 once in a while, maybe once in like three, four years, She's sending message to me. Begging for bread. I've not seen. Let me say this. Somebody that I've only seen once is also a pupil pastor. In fact, a general overseer. I made a comment. And he said, I made a post rather. And he said, go and look at your inbox. And I went to look at the inbox. I borrowed so, so, so amount from an app. I paid back certain amount. I do not have this amount to pay back. Please help me. How many of that do you want to respond to? Somebody that I've only seen once in my life. He's not even my friend. Somebody that is my friend that I was trying to uh, sort out to say, okay, come and be using this office, was the one that sent him to come and clean the office so that he can use it. So that was the only one time I saw him. He came to take care of the place. Eventually, they did not call. And then he said he was doing wedding for his child. Where's my own business there? Was I the one that gave back to the child? And then you are writing me. Please, I need your support. I've always loved you. I've always this. Come and help me. Was I the one that faced the date for you? If it was not convenient for you, why didn't you just do parlor wedding? Can you, can, can you blame all these people? No, it is condition that has bent crayfish. It is just a reflection of what is happening in Nigeria. But you will be okay. Yeah. Number two, we can see 
a situation whereby people have been abandoned, neglected, forgotten, not bothered, not catered for. People have been forsaken. I've seen people that traveled overseas and they never want to discuss or attend to any need. It didn't just start now. My best friend in the secondary school, his younger brother traveled to UK. Since the guy traveled to UK, if he calls them with this number today, he has changed that number. You cannot reach him on phone except he reaches you. As a matter of fact, me, I was in UK. I called him. Come on to come and see me. Maybe he thought that I was going to bring needs. He just said, Mom, 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 I never came. Abandon their parents, abandon their siblings, abandon their friends, abandon the people they were struggling together here. He said, I have not seen the righteous forsaken. Which means some people were being what? Forsaken. It is happening in the Nigeria of today. People that are highly placed don't want to attend to needs and requests of those that are under. In our days and time, having the number of somebody does not mean access. I told you what I do. But I don't want to pick your call. I don't want to pick your call. And you know what I do? Somebody will tell me that I'm not born again. That's our Allah. God knows I'm born again. You call me. Hello? Who is it? The moment you mention your name, I'll look at it. I'll cut it off. And immediately I will be the one to call you, call you back. So by the time I'm calling you back, as far as you are concerned, it was bad network. Hello, you will pick it. I will cut it back. I will cut it again. By the time I call you the second time, the third time, and the fourth time, you will say, ah, this network is really bad. Dude. What will you do? You bother me with call. By the time I bother you, are, in this case, mind what I said. You are not the one bothering me. I'm the one bothering you. You are not the one bothering me. I'm the one bothering you. You only called once. You, maybe you have only two naira on your phone. You are using it to flash. In this case, I'm not flashing. In fact, there are some calls now I've placed on mute. But when I see, see, they were trying to reach me. I'm the one that will reach them back. Hello? Hello? Iran, your mama, pay me over. I'll cut it off. Now, 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 tell me what is I should do there. I'm a child of God. Can you condemn me? Can you judge me? Are we not the one that will judge the world? Is that the whosoever seen that I remit is remitted? Whosoever seen that I what? I, I, so it is. So now, how dear are you trying to tell me what is sin or not? I shall hear you. Be careful yourself. Whichever way you call it, it's just the reality. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now, what is the reality in living in Nigeria now? Ask, having somebody's number is not an access. Knowing somebody that is well to do does not mean that the person will be of assistance to you. I have a friend in uh, Akure. We were in secondary school together. Right? Then he has a friend who was in the House of Assembly. I think the guy must still be in the House of Assembly now. He has been in Assembly since Miracle's time and he's been very consistent. You know, the guy will have one project or the other to do. And he will put this, my friend, to oversee. And that guy will account for every 10 couple. But to support, to help this guy, to even help him look for something in government. Now, like, until the guy came, he told me that that his friend opened his mouth to tell him that, look, Sunday, you know, Lord, where will you see Lord, me? 
The guy was building a filling station. Shouldn't he make him a manager there? He said, you know, look, your help is not. And yet, they, are, they remain friends. So that somebody is your friend. In these days, Nigeria does not mean that he will assist you. That somebody is your family member. In today's Nigeria, is not a yaski that the person will help you. Now, if that is where you are placing your hope, you are failed. May you not fail. How to cope? I can't finish it because our time is spent. How to cope? And let me quickly say this anyway. Can you really blame people that are abandoning people? You can't blame them. All the pleasures you are getting, if you allow those things to remain on you, you will become like them, if not worse than them. If care is not taken, you will even die. Throw away self. That's the gospel truth. Somebody shout hallelujah. How to live in Nigeria is that abandon those that you think you should abandon. Help only those that you know you have the capacity to do what? Help. What have I decide, decided to do? The first thing is the little money that I can gather. First put it in a business that can generate what? Profit. When that profit is generated, you can also do what? Share. But if you venture to go and touch the money with which you ought to do business just because you want to be Mr. Church, you are not Jesus so, and you are not God. And no man can ever take the position of God or take the position of Jesus Christ. Somebody shout, Hallelujah. If you are very stupid, the money you ought to commit to a gainful venture, and you come to church and you say, Take 50K, take 20K. People, it is that time they are collecting that they know. If it is not there tomorrow, they will not know again. That is the reality. Look, you have collected your salary. In the factory, sorry, let me just take a few minutes. I was discussing with some guy in the factory. His father had issues. So as I got to Ibadan on Tuesday, and I told me that, and to that Tuesday, if I'm not mistaken, should be around 14th of the month. And we pay salary on 28th. And he came to me to tell me that he didn't even have money to travel, to go and see his father. And I said, come, this is how much you collect. Are you telling me that your salary is finished in just two weeks? He said, yes, sir. I said, okay. I gave him all the money in my pocket. Take. Because at any point in time, there is some money I just keep as liquid cash in my pocket in case of so I gave him only for him to get to the village and now said his father has blood, blood sickness and that they needed to buy pants of blood and now I began to ask for money again. But I took time to lecture him. And I have a meeting with many of them the following day to tell them that you, I know how much you collect. Certain amount and I said you shouldn't Many of them live within the factory premises. So they are not paying rent. They are not paying transportation. They are not paying for water. They are not paying for electricity. All they pay money for was just to feed. And yet they don't have savings. That is why reality of Nigeria is catching up with them. Some of them will have a lot of channels that take their money. If you don't block that channel, you will never make it. No matter the prayer you pray. Rise on your feet. You get it? These are the reality. How to live in Nigeria. Please. Somebody shout hallelujah. Whoever that God has helped you to support. Support willingly. Alright? If you are not able to support. At that point in time. Never feel condemned. Never feel never feel unfulfilled. Is anybody listening to me? 
if you are stupid with the way you distribute the little income you have, you are coming down low. This country is very hard. In my village, it is said, if you are, if fire is burning you, and the same fire is burning your your child, who do you you put off the one on your, before you put off the one on your? We we'll continue by the grace of God. From here next Sunday, lift your hands to the heavens and say, "Oh Lord, oh Lord. by your mercy, by your mercy. May, Nigeria may Nigeria not happen to me." <laughs> it's a tricky prayer. Nigeria will not happen to you. Pray that prayer for yourself. You people just stay there and be making noise. I shall eat the fruit of the land by the power of the Holy Ghost.